But has he mastered Necronomicers? Hmm. What gots we here? A relatively juicy Act 1. There's a heavy upgrade route and a heavy elite route, both. I like them a lot. Mark this one in red. I believe. Not sure which of these I would do. And then a green path gets more upgrades, less elites. The Searing Blow path. And I like this sort of pathing because we get to decide, after we get some information, which route we go, left or right. Is there any other path that looks vaguely compelling? Not really. The far left has a burning elite too early. This middle path only gets one elite. Uh, we could go this way instead of this way, but they're basically the same. So, to do this, do we start with an upgrade? A transform two? Seven max with a boss swap. Daily calling curse key swap into clumsy mastery. Hmm. I don't know that I'm swapping here. I'm feeling maybe a transform too. In exchange for some of our max health. Or honestly, just bash upgrade is not unreasonable here, especially if I want to go red path. It's simple, but it gets the job done. And it does really help in the early combats to make sure we have enough health for this first fight too. I would love to transform into Searing Blow. I'm gonna do a bash upgrade. I haven't done a bash upgrade run in a while. Let's see how it feels. My hope is that this should allow us to save health against Cultist and Jawworm to run into this fight with almost full health. Best starter up deck upgrade on every character, says Storm of the Seas. Eruption on Watcher, Neutralize on Silent. Bash on Ironclad, it's the only starter card that he has. And Zap or Dual Cast on Defect actually depends a little bit on the situation you're in. So I would say for Defect it varies. Smoke Bomb, interesting first potion. We're offered a Shockwave, Sword Boomerang, Metallicize. I haven't seen a Floor 1 Metallicize in a long time. I think Metallicize is a power that's uh, generally only good as a one-off in your Ironclad deck. Because too many copies of Metallicize will lose you certain fights more than having it generically helps you. Just a little bit of block every turn. In Act 1, this adds up real fast. Uh, and notably, is not affected by Frail, which is pretty good. Normally, I'd be taking a Shockwave here, but with the upgrade on Bash, I think it's less important. Let's try a Metallicize. And a card removal or gain gold. Card remove might be relatively free, thanks to Burning Blood. I'm down to remove one strike. Let's do it. Starter cards are stinky. Give me better cards. Give me better potions. I'll look at uh, two potions. I think that should be plenty here. Take them both. And look at that. Metallicize putting in some work already. The Blockination. Ow. Here I thought I would be... A okay in this fight. How foolish I was. Still got plenty of health, though. Lex Cleave Warcry. We should take a cleave. We need some damage. We're down a strike. We'd love to replace it with a slightly more damaging strike and replace it with a card that can hit multiple enemies. It's just fine. Can't get away with taking flex here. We need we need an attack card right now. We need this attack potion right now as well if we want to go red path. We could also just go green. 
but we set ourselves up to go red. Let's do it. Cultist. This should be an easy... Easy gain of hit points. Bash defend this turn. Not quite able to kill. Take three. Okay, plus, plus three health off this fight. They're not too bad. Pummel Strike versus Spot Weakness. Both of these are pretty good. Spot Weakness can improve the damage of all of our cards, very notably the Cleave, but doesn't always work. Whereas Pummel Strike is very efficient damage and some draw. I think with the Energy Potion, we probably want this Pummel Strike. An early Spot Weakness can really define a deck, though, so it's hard to turn down. Our boss this act is Guardian. Now we're going to take Pummel Strike here. I don't trust the spot weakness against Gremlin Knob in particular. It's not that good against Legabulin either. Metallicize definitely helps out in this fight. And I probably Energy Potion, Bash, Pummel Strike, Strike, Strike. Seems reasonable to me. Can't it help nullify the minus strength for Lega, though? Well, I think I think the easiest way to answer the question about why not take the spot weakness is just picture this hand with spot weakness instead of pummel strike. Wow, that thunder, though. Might even need to use both potions in this fight. We'll see. Bash? Yes. Don't think we need to use the attack potion now. We should be fine. Do Pummel Strike. Here's where Spot Weakness would be pretty good. Actually, can we kill in time here? Minus two strength, this will do seven goes to ten, six goes to nine, four goes to six. Ten, nine, six won't kill, so that means we need to use the attack potion. Bummer. All right, a two potion fight, but a pretty comfortable one, all, all things considered. We get the legendary ceramic fish. Gold per card added. And I might take a Perfected Strike here. We're currently at five Strike cards. Does pretty good damage for two energy. Oh, that's amazing, Philly. For the birthday stream. I'm currently in the United States, uh, jump to it. I live on the East Coast in New England these days. But yes, Alberta is my, uh, my home province. It's where I get the morale bonus. If I occupy a tile that's in Alberta. Does it count itself as a strike card? Yes. It sure does. It even counts cards that say strike from other characters, like Meteor Strike. I could also reasonably take a flex here, but I think this Perfected Strike will get us through the next Elite much more smoothly. I could also go this way. Why would I... We get on the green path now, right? There's actually no reason to continue on this red path when we can go on this path. We get another card reward, maybe another potion before the Elite instead of going into the Elite immediately. We also get the Relic before the Elite, not after. That's actually really important. So let's unmark this path. Don't take this path. We do get one less event, but that's not a bad thing. Perfected Strike Ceramic Fish Synergy. Take all the strike cards. Become rich.
Ouch. Here I was expecting an easy hallway fight. This isn't too bad, thanks to Cleave, though. Take 12. Should be all we need to take. Maybe take two more next turn. Oh. Uh, three more. Three more this turn. Do I have a link for my best perfected strike, Rodden? I don't think I have such a thing on hand. No, I don't think I do. Oh, also, I cannot kill the Angry Gremlin. I guess I could take two. Or we kill you and take one. That's better. Take one. Bailey's on the case. Good. All right, not that bad of a Gremlin's fight, but that definitely was a bit scary. Do we grab the preemptive corruption with only four defends in the deck as our skills? Do we take the rare card that says all your skills are free? I don't know about that. It's really bad against the Guardian boss, very notably. I... I am a sucker for corruption, generally speaking, and Dark Embrace, but this is one of the worst corruptions I've ever seen. Meanwhile, Wild Strike. Uh, I actually don't hate going double cleave here. That is pretty underwhelming, though. Double cleave would be good against sentries. I think we just skip. My, it's my intuition. This we upgrade. Seven copies of Peace Rank and Necronomicon. That's definitely tough to beat. Dang. Ooh. Whenever we lose hit points, gain block on the next turn. Self-forming clay is an ironclad only relic, and uh, a very good one at that. Good. It's going to help a lot in this fight. We get a little bit of block from Metallicize, a little bit of block from the self-forming clay, and then we take a little bit of chip damage. And we essentially get six block per turn without having to do anything. So I probably want to play this strike. The faster this fight ends, the better, yeah? If we defend, I only block three next turn, so I take four to block take four to block three. Yeah, it's only costing me one hit point to play the strike. Oh no. Uh, I want you to die next turn. Okay, that was a pretty good fight, especially considering we had no potions. If we score a Paper Frog, enemies that are vulnerable will take more damage. And if we want another AoE card, we can take a Whirlwind. That's a lot better than a Cleave. King Albert III, thanks for the Prime sub. Welcome to the Cozy Sub Club. I'll take and upgrade that Whirlwind. Cleave deck only, please. Ooh, the whirlwind just in time. Hmm. Dang. Take six if I go cleave, strike, strike. What if I go defend, defend? Take a little, uh, more than that, okay. Lose six, gain six, net zero. Carnage. Same roll as Perfected Strike. I could almost see Thunderclap with a Paper Frog, actually. 
as a vulnerable extender slash vulnerable for cleaver whirlwinds. I don't think it's good enough, though. Not sufficiently convinced. One second, Twitch Jet. I just have to look out the window and see what is actually happening outside. That's a lot of rain. Bang. It's happening outside is a bad air quality index. Where does water rate on the air quality index scale? If the atmosphere is pure water, which it appears to be, how does that work? I'm going to skip these cards. We took a lot of combats this act, so we want to skip a couple cards. You don't want to take too many cards act one, or you'll have a bloated, useless deck come act two. Oof, this draw order, though. Good thing we have an energy potion. I think we'll be fine here. Okay, bash turn two. That's good. Uh, math time. How much damage does Perfected Strike plus Strike do next turn? We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 strikes, so this is 6 plus 3 by 6. 24 base. What's 24 times 1.75? 42. And the Strike does 10, right? That's right, 10. So 52 damage next turn. 22 minus... This is what? 12? 14? It's 58. So we don't get a kill unless I use the energy potion. Which means we might as well just use the energy potion. Take 5 damage when the fight. Sounds good to me. So energy pot, whirlwind, guaranteed draw this. We could also pummel strike. And then if we draw the perfected strike, we energy pot and use it. Although, there might be a bad draw. I'm not going to do the math. Let's just Whirlwind this turn. P-Strike next turn. Seems good to me. Singing Bowl. Here we go. Now we can gain max health by skipping cards. Although, who's going to do that when there's a Bloodletting on offer? Bloodletting causes us to lose HP, but gain energy. Very, very powerful. I think it's one of the best energy gain cards on Ironclad, if not the best. And because we have self-forming clay, it also gives us three block on the next turn. Yes, please. GamerCat says, when is Dropkick good? Dropkick can be very useful for forming combo decks on Ironclad. If you can loop Dropkicks or Dropkick Pommel Strike loop, you can kill enemies in a very few turns. So Dropkick is best in decks that have access to Vulnerable, but also access to Exhaust, so that you can delete all of the cards in your deck that aren't the Dropkick and the Vulnerable source. $260 bucks into this shop. Ooh, preserved Insect. Ori with Singing Bowl is definitely tempting. Dark Shackles is broadly strong. Battle Trance is broadly strong. Ori, huh? Interesting. Don't love Ori without the ability to have upgraded cards in it, but it's still pretty good here. Let's just pick a block card or two for Guardian. Probably makes that corruption in retrospect correct, because we could build up on skills here. And the fact that it's a guaranteed max health up if we don't even take any cards is pretty good too. Right, we get a 9 gold rebate for every card we do take. We get a 2 max health rebate for every card we don't take. <laughs> Zyothin, thanks for 5 months of the Prime sub. Pretty hard sell on uh, not taking Preserved Insect, though. Act 2 a lot more comfortable with a deck like this if we have smaller elites. Oh. Hmm. But 
with these relics supporting it. Let's see what we can do. I feel like the insect is probably better, but we're going to click on this. Okay, that's, uh, cards. Better clap, okay. Body slam, evolve, spot weakness is back. Shrug. Definitely want shrug and spot weakness. Do we take flame barrier, juggernaut barricade? Actually, flame barrier sounds good. Take a flame barrier. Muda Sheep, if I were to come up with a dad joke based on this card, would it be lame barrier? And I'll take Max Health on both of these. Don't shrug it, shrug. Shrug a nation. I'll buy the Battle Trance. Goodbye, another shrug. I'm not going to, though. Hot. The hottest of nonsense is. I think we upgrade B Trance. Once you've got both card draw cards and energy gain cards in your deck, it's often best to just upgrade both of those things. Upgrade the card draw, upgrade the energy gain, so you can play more cards total to get stuff done. Dang. We have a skill potion in the worst case scenario. No worst case scenario, thankfully. This is worth it. Take two, we get three block next turn. And I got to do some damage. Take one here, gain three block next turn. Probably don't play Whirlwind. Although... Oh yeah, I can't even defend after Whirlwinding, so no. Let's do this. Ouch. Nice. Of course, we're going to break the uh, spot weakness draw again. Dang it. Oh, we didn't. Perfect. Okay. We can spot weakness and perfected strike next turn. Good. Not playing Battle Trance there because I want to draw spot weakness when the enemy attacks me. Chunk. Uh, and I can Bloodletting to Bash? That's super worth it. Ominous. Am I a poker player? No. I'm familiar with some of the terminology, though. Exact lethal. GG. Did you know that I play games other than Slay the Spire? It's true. Catch me over on Baylor Lord Plays for card games, RPGs, strategy games, and more. Perfected Strike really putting in the work there, multiplied by the uh, Paper Frog. It's a good fight. Corruption's back. If we want it again, we can take it this time. We have much more skills now, so it's a lot better than before. And I don't think the other rares are all that good. I mean, we could go Demon Form, I suppose. But I think I'd rather just take this Corruption. Corruption opens up Snackawai is a really good pick. And Runic Pyramid. Okay, we'll grab this. After playing Corruption, all of our skills become free. I like to think of this as an energy cheat for the Ironclad. And it can really help with uh, not taking an energy boss relic. Oh, it did open up Snekawai. Much, much happy with what I see here. 
Our other energy options are pretty bad. Busted Crown gives us less cards to choose from. I suppose with Singing Bowl, it's not the worst thing in the world to take Busted Crown. Or Velvet Choker, which limits us to six cards per turn. Also not the worst thing in the world. In fact, pretty comfortable in Act 2, but definitely puts a hard cap on what Corruption can achieve for us. How's it going, Sidwill? Why continue playing after the 20th difficulty? I like to think of this as one of the most replayable games I've ever encountered. I've put more than 6,000 hours into Slay the Spire now, which is more than I've ever played any other game in my whole life. Uh, and despite that immense amount of time, this game continues to create experiences that are novel to me. And I have not been able to say that about any other game with thousands and thousands of hours. It's a puzzle that no one ever really knows the answer to. And uh, it's just heckin' fun at its core. Really, really great game. So I love the Sneko Eye. Sneko Eye is going to draw us more cards each turn, but we'll be confused, meaning our cards are random cost. That's 0, 1, 2, or 3, with equal odds of each. That means anything that's 0 or 1 cost will get more expensive on average. Anything that's 2 or 3 cost will get cheaper on average. However, the Corruption will override the random cost. So once we play the Corruption, which can only ever get cheaper or stay the same cost at 3, then all skills in the whole deck will become 0 cost. And we can play the random cost attacks that we keep drawing, which are going to be pretty good. So here's where the Preserved Insect would have been nice. I guess we can go this path pretty reasonably. Lots of elites, lots of upgrades. No complaints about that. Uh, early shop would be nice for a Carter move, but we don't need to. Probably don't even want to. We'll decide on how many events versus combats we want. Do I think I could get close to 100% win rate at lower Ascension level? I think so, yes. On a Ascension 0 or Ascension 1, I think you could win 50 or 100 heart wins in a row. Probably the highest Ascension I'd consider consistently winnable would be Ascension 9. Once you add the Ascender's Bane at Ascension 10, pretty tough. Pretty tough. Start here. Dark Dunane says, I, I went for 100 but lost at 86 with the Watcher. Oof. Valiant attempt, though. Very valiant attempt. Okay, so corruption makes all the skills free. And I can bloodletting to perfect its strike, which I should probably do. I want to kill this thing next turn. I'm gonna draw exactly these seven cards, but I can play the defend in the battle France. Zero cost bash. Oh, yeah. All right, Battle Trance, save me. Good work. So you can see we're able to play a lot of cards on average, mostly thanks to Corruption, but also just because drawing a lot of cards at random cost means inevitably some of them are going to be nice and cheap. Give me an uppercut. Another way to apply Vulnerable with the Paper Frog sounds excellent. Any card with a base 2 cost is going to be pretty good. We haven't actually won with two or more regrets yet. And losing health is actually not that bad because of the self-forming clay. Let's take the money here. And this curse. I'll do it. No regrets. Let's take some events now. Uh, we're currently not on track to hit a shop, which is questionable. I guess we could go this way, too. Hold on. Take a look at this. That's allowed. If I want three elites in a shop now. Let's see what the events are first. Ow.
larger average hand size definitely presents a bit of a problem. With the regret curse, that is. Oh, you went for 31. Spooky, except I kill you now. Nice fight. Flame Barrier with an upgrade is very strong with Snekawai, but is it as good as Dual Wield? I'm fighting Champ? Oh, man. I can do the thing against Champ. I love doing the thing against Champ. Upgraded Flame Barrier is real good, though. Yeah, what's the thing against champ? It's uh, it's dual wielding metallicize until you have more metallicize than the champ does. It's pretty funny. Can scale perfected strike too? I mean, it, it has some really good utility. It just that flame barrier is a really good card. I'm gonna take this flame barrier. It's too good, man. Trade the strikes for bites? Not with my perfected strike. Although it is 45 gold, hmm. And healing. Double, hmm. I've got plenty of gold as it is. No, thank you. Lou Bob, thanks for five months of the Prime Sub. And that's why you take the Flame Barrier, Twitch Chat. Never know when Snake Plant's gonna be around the corner. And you're not gonna draw the Flame Barrier. You wait. Oh, right. No, I can't draw. Fair enough. I could skill potion, but I think that's a bad idea. Okay, one less rest site, one less late event, one more shop. Probably worth it. Excuse me, Flame Barrier. Very rude. Perfected Bite. Second Wind is a very good card with uh, Snekawai. This lets us get rid of the Regrets. As well as any other non-attack cards we don't want. The more cards you have in your hand, the better Second Wind is. It's pretty good. Dex Potion could be nice for Champ. I no longer need the Elixir, I don't think. Now that we have Second Wind. I think we are going to go this way. I want the store, now that we're rich. Upgrades. Uppercut upgrade's pretty good. Pommel Strike upgrade's pretty good. I'd rest, but we're already close enough to full. Just preemptively, with three elites coming up. Could upgrade this flame barrier. I think for champ we're going to want uppercut upgraded. Let's do that first. Corruption upgrade, unfortunately, doesn't matter at all. Corruption upgrades from three cost to two cost, but the Snekawai makes it random cost, regardless of what it originally cost. So there's no benefit whatsoever to the upgrade. Bloodletting upgrade is pretty good. Let's see. Take three strength on turn one or transform two cards. I don't love transforming strikes. Strength on turn one helps us kill stuff immediately. Ominous thunderclap. Let's take the turn one strength. We get... Three strength on turn one. We lose it at the end of the first turn, and look at this value. Although not enough value. Uh, double tap. Good enough. Yeah, that's good enough. Yeah, champ belt would be good here, no kidding. Hmm. We become vulnerable if we don't kill the back guy. We need to pummel strike and cleave then. As much as I would like to play corruption. 
We must kill this enemy before we become vulnerable, or we will perish. Hey, free flame barrier, even better. Ow. Good. Great, even. Toasty. Cheap Carter moves is good. True Grit or Fiend Fire, both are good. Again, allowing us to delete a lot of cards at the same time. Well, Fiend Fire does. True Grit lets us delete a card renewably, which can be good for setting up in certain fights, good for getting rid of the regret, too. Although, kind of odd with corruption. Let's take the Fiend Fire. True Grit not being green definitely limits its utility. Two random attack upgrades. Uh, most likely to hit strikes. Overwhelmingly likely to hit strikes. Fiend Fire upgrade's pretty good. Pommel Strike upgrade's pretty good. I think in practice we take the key here. Flygon with four metric years, 40 months. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. 27. Oh-ho. Oh no. I see. Let's see. 9, 11. Not quite, huh? Hmm. Guess I probably want to uppercut one of the minions here. Once we have corruption in play, we'll be fine. Once we have corruption in play, we'll be fine. Corruption is now in play. Spin to win. Not too bad. Sundial is bonus energy upon shuffling the deck enough times. That's actually pretty good. Huh. Rupture with a plus on it. And you lose health from a card, gain two strength. Curious. Works with the regret, works with the bloodletting. I like it. Let's try it. And an hourglass for three damage per turn to all foes. Always welcome. Definitely tempting to take some more events here. We need this shop, though. We're rich. Very cool when Rupture actually feels viable. Very cool. Give me that strength. Oh no, I'm going to be confused. No... Does Rupture work with burns? Yes, but you have to not block the burn. If you block the damage, you will not gain the strength. This also gives us strength, but I don't think it's good enough. Skip. Not enough vulnerable. I think we keep Dex Potion, Energy Potion. There it is, Dark Embrace. Here we go. Dark Embrace with Bottled Tornado. Also a feed here, I guess, technically. Can I buy Frozen Eye and the Havoc? Because that's kind of cool. I could also bottle the Rupture, curiously enough. Definitely buy this. 
think we're gonna buy this. Yeah, pleasant surprise to see a shop we're not really rich enough for. I'm gonna remove strikes at this point. Have to buy Frozen Eye? We don't have to. It's a little bit less valuable with Sneko Eye, but only a little bit. Do we bottle the Dark Embrace of the Corruption is my main question. I think for most fights we want Corruption. First. But there's a reasonable argument either way. They're both very important. I like that Dark Embrace works with the second wind of the Fiend Fire. Puddle Metallicize. Is Thunderclap worth it with Frog? N no, not with Sneko Eye. We want a Shockwave instead. Dark Embrace for the longer hard fights. Like Awaken one? Yeah, like Awaken one. And yes, I can buy both the Havoc and the Frozen Eye. Let's do it. It's kind of fun. And keep the rest. Although bottling any power is kind of bad here. Would have much preferred to draw Uppercut. We do get Corruption next turn, so all we have to do is play the Dark Embrace and hold on for dear life. Energy potion here? No. Or uh, dex potion here? I think in champ, rather. It's okay to take damage here. Tis the way of the slavers fight. Ow. 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 Uh, Havoc will hit spot weakness, which is guaranteed to work. That's kind of cool. All three are attacking, so no matter who this targets, we get there. Excellent. Get toasted, friend. Get a bit of max health. Always appreciated. Another corruption or another shrug. I think when you've got a corruption, there's no such thing as too many shrug it offs. So we'll happily add another one. And I think for champ, we might want to upgrade the spot weakness. Probably want to play this two times on champ to be successful. Hello. Three bash. Got it. Oh, Dark Embrace Shrug? Yes. We draw a spot weakness next turn. Hopefully we're being attacked. Good. Can't spot weakness and then corruption unless I use the energy potion. One spot weakness going to be enough. I really would prefer to get rid of regret right now. Hmm. Let's have the rupture, technically. And we have the sundial. I choose to believe that this is going to work. bloodletting if I don't second win right away. So just second win right away. 
lest we lose the bloodletting. Alright. Top six cards. This draws two, this draws four. Okay. We don't want no cards. This is going to be what we have left with Sundial. Doesn't quite bring Champ to half, which actually buys us more time, potentially. That's good. Yeah, that's really good. So let's go Perfected Strike, Pommel Strike. Bash, shrug it off. Whirlwind for seven energy. Easy peasy. Thank you, Sundial. What do we think? I Immolator Bludgeon. Both are pretty valid with Sneko. Actually, Brutality, though. No, 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 Brutality. Right? This is one draw per turn, two strength per turn, and three block per turn. In exchange for one hit point. That's pretty good, even at random cost. Sure. And we have to take dome for energy or we can empty cage. Don't really like the mark of pain here. Adds two wounds to the draw pile. We didn't buy Dark Embrace at the shop? Yes, we did. Yep, we have it. It's right here. We didn't draw from the Fiend Fire because of the Battle Trance. We exhaust them anyway. Well, here's the thing. You still have to draw them the first time. And that is not a free action. That will result in worse hands. That will result in more damage taken. That will result in being turns behind in boss fights. Have I ever taken Runic Dome? Yes. Start here, I guess. Just end evolve to the deck. Easy peasy. No problem. Don't worry about it. Uh, do I want the free draw? Sure. Anyone attacking me? No. Let's do that then. Yeah, nobody was attacking me. Nobody. So, the flex pot over at X pot. Not going to trade 200 gold for the red mask, but I might fight a boss for a rare relic. 
two curses for 999 gold seems like a, a no way, with the Burning Elite forced upon us momentarily. We can't take curses here. Upgrading all of our cards and being unable to heal also seems pretty bad with uh, self damage things happening. We need that healing. So let's fight a boss, get a rare relic. The boss is Guardian, who is very easy. We're being attacked for 36 damage here. We can also just do this. Time. Oh, right. It's not toasty time anymore. Boss appears to be losing decisively. Poor boss. Fair enough. Take four. We score a pocket watch, giving us bonus card draw if we play three or fewer cards on our turn. That's exceptional. And uh, I think with a bottled Dark Embrace, I'm going to go ahead and take a second second wind here. For uh, lots of block and exhaust. Heck yeah. No champ belt, unfortunately. Pocket watch is pretty dang good, though. Let's fight. Sentinel, very good with Corruption. Perfected Strike, also tempting, but it's no Sentinel, not with an upgrade anyway. Combust would do one damage per turn. That's pretty good with the Rupture thing. But I don't trust it. These two. So that's what the energy potion is for. Aha, and the dual wield is back with an upgrade this time, creating two copies of an attack or power card at its current random cost. Very, very strong. Now we must fight the Reptomancer. Should be pretty easy, actually. This looks like a very good turn one. Whirlwind, then second wind? Yes. Yes, do it. Two or much more than 42. We talk. Erleron, thanks so much for the two months. Heck yeah. Bloodletting second wind? Question mark? We definitely need to make some stuff happen here. Second wind would draw five or six. Hmm. Distill chaos if we have to. Plus 10 plus 14. It's not enough, right? 
So probably distill the chaos to get the win right now before things get weird. That sounds fine. There's always more potions in the sea. Yeah, we need help. Get an ink bottle. Card draw for every 10 cards played. Sure, sure. Half tempted to take a close line here for the hard fight. The uppercut alone should be enough, though. And I'm going to recall now so that we can do whatever we want at the penultimate fire. Ma never attacks on turn one, always attacks on turn two. This enemy does not intend to attack. And then let's leave it at three so I can draw ten cards with Pocket Watch here. Not that they're very good cards coming up. We'll figure it out. This turn definitely might hurt, though. Okay, we get uppercut. We get second wind. Good enough. Beautiful. Play one of these brutalities, but only one. You attacking me? Yes. Fair enough. Yeah. Good times. A third second win with an upgrade. I think the two we have is enough. Another chance to combust? No thanks. No thank you. Pantograph. Heal 25 at the start of boss fights. Definitely helpful for the upcoming gauntlet. See, we would like to go to another shop, huh? A chance at Dolly's Mirror. Guess that's better than an Elite now. Do I also play games off stream? I do, Vap. My current off stream obsession is uh, The Last Spell, which I moved from being an on stream game to being an off stream game. A little bit too slow paced for the stream, but I really like it just as a solo game. Does Pantograph work for both bosses in A20? Yes, so it's an extra heal on A20, which is very powerful. I'll go to the shop, I guess. Hit me. At least I didn't get cursed, I guess. Still didn't get cursed. I'll take it. I'll take it. 
Combust with a plus. No. Brimstone. The start of every turn, we gain two strength and all enemies gain one strength. Spooky. Puzzle's okay. Want to save money for the final shop? Just gonna strike remove here. I don't think we're taking this brimstone. Feels like it's not that much strength compared to what we get anyway. And it adds a tremendous amount of incoming damage that we don't have a good way to answer, especially with the uh, Runic Dome. We can't even tell when it's coming. So I don't like that at all. Let's, uh, let's not. What a bad turn one versus transient. Amazing. I guess Dark Embrace Bash Strike is okay. Currently dealing nine to me. Yeah, that'll have to do. Rubam, thanks for seven while on vacation, or after getting back from vacation, whatever you did. Thank you. Hmm. Delete everything. Seems reasonable. Randy B, thank you so much for 30 months, 3 metric years. Today is a good day to slay. this thing every turn. Poor transient. Ink bottle activating sundial is kind of cool. Almost killed it. Not quite, though. If we'd taken Brimstone, we would have. Upgraded True Grit. Get in here. Don't have an energy potion this time. What do we do? Guess we don't kill them on turn one. So I don't want to draw with True Grit, huh? Shoot, that's fine, I guess. That's fine. Cultist Potion, one strength per turn, that'll do. Burning Pact, also pretty good. Beat is too late, way too late. 
way, way, way too late. Raw six. Eh. Oh, the fiend fire first. Or the regret first. Ristona, thanks for 27 months. Hell yeah. Hello? It's a fun way to win a fight. And no to these as well. Although theoretically we might be able to use blood for blood. We heal 425 with the pentagraph, so I don't think we need to rest. I think we should upgrade something. Either the flame barrier, the pommel strike. This is really important, actually, once we're almost out of cards. Let's get that pommel upgraded. Make the sundial work a bit better. And, uh, yeah. Seems fine. Definitely take some damage on turn one here, but turn two we draw many cards. And that'll do. Let's stop at a three here. Take 19 damage. Should be all we take though, I think. Excellent. Uh, don't do attacks turn two. Right. Havoc the rupture into play. Second win now. No, true good first. Just stop for the moment. Now, deck is attacking. Whirlwind coming up. Don't want to dual wield. Or blood I guess. We can Sentinel do Whirlwind for big damage. Seems good. GG nerds, who's next? The Time Slug. Gain strength after we play 12 cards. And presents a bit of a problem here. Tell me you're attacking turn one. Good. Thank you. I'll just take the damage and swing back in style next turn. Got plenty of health after all. Let's see, do we dual wield the rupture? That's my question. I think the answer is yes.
Could also do something like Uppercut into Fiendfire. And that would also get quite a bit done. How's it going, Dork Kitty? Do I enjoy Binding of Isaac of all at all? I like it uh, conceptually. I've watched a lot of the Binding of Isaac, but have actually never played it myself. Was for a while one of my favorite games to watch on Twitch. So I think we just uh, dual wield the rupture and then everything's good. Mostly good. Three cards next turn. Oh dear. That's bad. That's very bad. At least you're weak. Ouch. That could have been worse. Get him. GG, Tim Nerd. All right, we're on to Act 4. Two thump, two thump, two thump, a deep pulsing dread. Can be felt throughout the room. Is this the heart of the spire, the source? Of all this card draw. Wins. Oh, that's funny. Definitely had a lot more kills at this point last year. Do I think I'll revisit Hades again before the sequel comes out? No, I've, I've played Hades 1 to my satisfaction. We'll definitely play Hades 2 when it comes out, though. That's for sure. Ah. Easy every time. However, there's a very important question here, Twitch chat. Do we... Master Regret, or do we Master Transmutation? Because that is also an option I see here. But I think getting the curses done, I mean, that's what Ironclad is for, is for doing the curses. Regret even works with the uh, self-damage that we have, right? So yeah, I'm thinking Regret. I'm also thinking Gambler's Brew over Swift Potion looks good. We're going to keep the Cultist Potion. With Frozen Eye, the Gambler's Brew is very strong. Surely we won't regret mastering regret. Could have bought that Blood Potion. I didn't need to rest. That's funny. Lose the Strike? Is anything worse than Strike? Nope. Good luck to us. Why not master both? I can only do one. So we need two copies for the mastery. The mastery challenge requires that we defeat the corrupt heart with two or more copies of a card in our deck. So the second regret here required for the regret mastery. That's our self-imposed challenge in Slay the Spire. Not anything the game ever asks you to do. Beef Baylord. Bay Ford, excuse me. I'm the Baylord. Beef Bay Forward, thanks for the Prime sub. Welcome to the Cozy Sub Club. How's it going, Merle? We've chosen a regretful run to come in on. 
Oof, this turn one is abysmal in this fight. We really needed something other than this. Three, two, three, 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 two. Ouch. That is not how you do it. Now we really need to play that Dark Embrace. Dang it. I think I just played Dark Embrace and pass. And then next turn we can just Fiend Fire. And that's fine. I really wish I could spot weakness, Dark Embrace. I really do. Good news is we do draw 10 cards here. Ow. 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 You are multi-tanking. We'll probably go for the shield now. So we'll only draw two cards, so I can guarantee you to destroy regret. The battle trans, draw and do the good stuff. Okay. Burning Pact here. Fiend Fire here. If six damage per card. That's sad. Still worth it, though. Do we have any important cards remaining? Yeah, we can make it work. Not even gonna play brutality because I think the fight is well in hand, and I want every hit point I can get for the heart. Get punched. Like a bunch of times. Hmm. Does burn placement really get worse on higher ascensions? Yes. Yes, it does. Red. Theoretically helpful. Might just clog the deck, though. Let's go to exactly one hundo hit points. 95 out of a hundo, actually. That'll have to do. The best gremlin horn of all time. Of all time. Alright. Here's a fight where taking a bunch of damage isn't so bad. Beat of Death gives us strength on future turns. So do the re regrets, actually. Although we may want to discard them. I see we can have Dark Embrace Corruption down pretty quick. Definitely want to drink that turn one. Probably want to play Dark Embrace Brutality here. We could do Sentinel Dark Embrace Brutality, although it's arguably better to take the damage. Gambler's Brew could actually get us all the way to Corruption, although then we're not playing the Dark Embrace. Don't be foolish. Seems like a perfectly fine draw next turn. We can just destroy a lot of stuff, play the Fiend Fire, draw a lot of cards. 
so let's just go Dark Embrace, Brutality, Whirlwind. Rupture does not give strength from Beat of Death. No, no. It does from the re Regrets, though. Unfortunately, Rupture is also pretty far down in the deck. Yeah, the Beat of Death gives us clay value, which is what we want. So do the Regrets, although taking 3 plus 4 damage is not good. Oh, they both did 4? What the? <laughs> they both do 4? That's rude. They should resolve from left to right. Can't play Fiendfire. Shoot. Yeah, we got mathed there for sure. Would like to draw to that spot weakness before playing corruption. That's not going to happen, is it? No. Hmm. Now we corruption. That means we only get to spot weakness one time. I guess that's fine. Incoming damage is either 67 in a singular attack or 3 by 15 in a multi hit. We're hoping the multi hit is first. I would like to dual wield. Only if this metallicize is free would I consider it. It's not free. Okay, just second wind all this crap. Dual wield the uppercut and just punch this thing to death. Go for it. Uh, we also could see what Rupture costs. Let's draw a little bit more. One cost. Okay, so I could play all the copies of Rupture. That would be a lot of strength. That's probably worth it. Okay, let's dual wield the Rupture then. I have to make a room in hand. Awkward. I guess I'll do the uppercut first. Uppercut. Dual wield rupture. 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 Bloodletting. Rupture. Second win the garbage. Keep the wound around. That's fine. Oh, we need to get rid of the regrets, huh? Okay, be careful. Okay, that should be plenty of block. Was the multi hit first, although we didn't take any beat of death, so. Self forming clay does not help much here. This is gonna be the big singular attack then. That I can accommodate. Not a whole lot of stuff left in this deck, but we have 16 strength, so, you know. Doesn't matter too much. Um, delete a little bit of this, I guess. Two hundred, two hundred. We need to survive one more hit, huh? Hmm. Ouch. 
At least you're weak. Thirty-three health left. Twenty-three strength. So we just play this for fifty-four times four. That's the damage cap. The heart is not attacking us on this turn. We have to survive one more turn. With Weaken, I think we can do that. So, this attack is either 45, we can down to 33, or 4 times 15, we can down to 3 by 15. So, we have to block for at least 45 to stay alive. Thankfully, we can do that. We only have barely enough block, just barely, to make this a win. And then we whirlwind next turn. For victory. Thirty-seven strength. GG, Mr. Hart. If you enjoyed that video, watch this one next. And don't forget to check out Baylor Lord Plays for variety content. Click the blue Baylor icon to subscribe.